Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. I'm here in SpaceX headquarters to show you guys something really exciting. SpaceX allowed us an extremely rare opportunity to actually film inside their headquarters for a chance to check out how they're training NASA's next generation of astronauts for the commercial crew program. Now they didn't let us just shoot willy-nilly anywhere, but we did get some really cool behind the scenes look of some amazing things. In case you missed it, we already gave you a mini tour of SpaceX's awesome spacesuit, but as promised, today we're gonna show you a Crew Dragon mock-up, the software trainer, the ingress egress trainer, and even one of the first Crew Dragon capsules that will have astronauts on board. So first up, let's check out this mock-up. Now, keep in mind, this is just a high fidelity mock-up to give you a sense of scale. But unlike, say, a concept car, the mock-up looks a lot less cool than the actual flight hardware. Nevertheless, let's hop inside. All right, so I'm here in SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. Looking up at the view here, uh, there's a couple touch screens, about three of them, and there's very few buttons. This thing looks like basically like a, a set of iPads, about three of them, and then there's only two knobs on this whole thing and about 40 buttons or so. This is a very minimalistic design. Uh, it's a pretty big change from, say, the Soyuz capsule, and right now where I'm sitting, I don't see the need for any of those poking sticks like they need on the Soyuz capsule. So this is, uh, this is a pretty good look here. It, it feels great. Uh, it's nice to see what this is really gonna actually look like in the future. There's a lot more to check out. So next up, we went inside to see the flight trainer where astronauts learn the Dragon software inside and out. This is actually where the astronauts are training how to ride in the Dragon capsule. I, I'm gonna hesitate to say they, they're gonna fly the Dragon capsule because if all goes well, uh, they're kind of out of a job as far as pilots go because really this whole thing is autonomous and all the screens here and all the buttons are basically for information about, you know, they can actually see things like where's the next ground tracking station? Are we going to actually have communications with the ground? So you can see where upcoming, you know, blackout periods with, with mission control would be. Um, but they can even see things like upcoming events. They can, they can scroll up and actually see a tab of like, oh, we're going to jettison the nose cone here in a second. And they can actually get planning on, on where they're at in the mission, which is really cool. Um, it kind of looks almost Kerbal Space Program-esque, if I dare say that, where it's just, it's as you would kind of expect. It's nice and simple and intuitive. Um, and then there's, of course, manual controls for some of the things that you would want manual control over as a contingency, because of course, you know, in a nominal situation, and as we hope to go, the astronauts pretty much just get to hang out. This is their autonomous ride to space. And for the most part, the only reason they're even uh, are trained is, is a contingency, because otherwise, this thing is just gonna take care of itself, which is a very 21st century way of having a spaceship. Then we popped over to the ingress egress trainer where crew is trained on how to get in, buckle up, and generally move around in the dragon capsule. And believe it or not, this is how it will actually look. So come on down here. This is actually where crew is really training uh, as well. So this is all real test articles uh, that is currently configured with four seats. Obviously it'll fly first on the demo mission and then the next two NASA missions will only have two seats. Um, but there is room on the floor. There's a lot of room down there. There's actually up to three cargo pallets as well, which is kind of a, a good thing because you can get multi-use out of it as well. Might as well haul a bunch of cargo while you're putting crew up as well. Um, these seats are uh, not stationary, believe it or not. They actually move up to the screen into the controls, which is really cool. Um, I know when the, when the Dragon was revealed at first, um, Elon pulled the screens down, uh, but this is uh, a little different so the, the seats will actually actuate up getting you closer to the screen, which is, uh, I never thought of doing that. It's a really cool way to do things. It's got that quintessential stark beauty that is SpaceX, and it's just really cool to see it actually in person, because this is 
uh, as close to flight hardware as I'm probably ever going to get. So um, it's really cool to see it up close and personal like this. And obviously you have, this is the, the main hatch where they, they're going to get in and out of from the white room on 39A. And then up top, there is actually a separate docking port um, and a separate way to get through that, in through the International Docking Adapter when it's docked to the International Space Station. It's really cool to see it up close and personal, and, and it sounds like the seats are kind of constantly being tweaked and revised even, which is, which is great because they look phenomenal now, so I just, I don't know how you'd improve upon it, but you can really get a sense for what it's gonna be like to fly in this thing. Oh, it's stunning. And with that, we wrapped up our time with the egress ingress trainer and then went down on the factory floor to actually see where the dragons are being manufactured inside the clean room. Wait, are dragons manufactured or hatched? Let's just call this the hatchery just to be safe. So I'm here at the clean room where they process a dragon and crew dragon and behind me is the pressure vessel for a crew dragon. Now the exciting thing here is you can really see why they're so adamant about wanting to refurbish these things. Because can you imagine throwing all this away? Uh, there's a lot of really high-end expensive hardware on that thing so it does make sense that they're going to be reflying the dragon capsules as well although it does sound like they won't be reflying dragon capsules for human use it does sound like they'll tear these crew dragon capsules down for reuse as cargo vessels kind of like how they're doing that right now with their current dragon capsules but this is all different from boeing who'll be trying to reuse their starliners up to 10 times you know mostly because they actually land on land but SpaceX will be reusing it, but just not for humans. So you can see down below uh, on the bottom side, those are where the skirts kind of end up. They hide all of the fuel tanks. So there's actually life support systems and fuel tanks for those super Dracos that hide in there. And the regular RCS, the reaction control systems, they have these Draco engines. And so all of the tanks actually go around the bottom of it. Uh, and then they put these cool looking aerodynamic cones, uh, the skirts over top of that. But this is a good shot of it in process, which you don't always get to see. So this is all happening. Finally, we know the first four NASA astronauts who will ride the first Dragon capsules. We see the hardware. The rockets are getting ready. The launch pads are getting ready. Are you getting ready? Seriously, this is going to be an exciting chapter in spaceflight history. Stick around for more and more videos to get you ready for these exciting times. If you have any spaceflight questions, be sure and let me know in the comments below. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping make trips like this attainable. If you want to see more videos like this, head on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And a huge shout out to my friend Patrick Lawler for coming out and shooting this incredible footage with his 6K Red Dragon camera. And while you're on the internet, pop on over to my web store, everydayastronaut.com, to get your own awesomely nerdy space shirts. Thanks everybody, that's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Yeah.